More is usually better, right? We used to listen to music on a single mono speaker. Now two speakers is basically like a minimum. We used to watch TV on tiny little screens. Now 65 inch TVs feel a little small. Our first digital cameras had less than one megapixel. Now you can buy cameras with over 40 megapixels. What's better than one set of speaker wires running from your amp to your speakers? That's right, two sets of speaker wires. More speaker wire to carry your amplified music from the amp to the speaker means that each strand of copper has less to do, so it can do it more effectively. That's by wiring. And if we add a second amplifier or amp channel for each speaker too, that's by amping. I'm JR, training manager here at Crutchfield, and let's get into the details of by wiring and by amping your home speakers. Speaker wire consists of a positive and a negative conductor to complete a circuit between the amp and the speaker. It's how electricity in the form of alternating current combined with audio signal creates positive and negative signals constantly going back and forth at the frequencies found in your music. When you connect the speaker wire to the output of your amp, you are typically getting full range music, all the frequencies in a given song ranging from the lowest humans can hear to the highest. And on the other end of the speaker wire, that full range music connects to the positive and negative terminals on the back of your speaker. The music then travels inside the speaker enclosure to a crossover network. A speaker that can be bi-wired or bi-amped has two sets of speaker wire inputs, and they come from the factory with jumpers or bridges connecting the two sets of inputs together by default. Leave those jumpers in place if you are not planning to bi-amp or bi-wire your speakers. The music is then split out into highs, mids, and lows and sent on to their corresponding driver. Capacitors strip out the bass to protect a tweeter from very large, low frequency waves. Coils remove super tiny high frequencies and send just the bass to your woofers so the large drivers don't try to play the high notes, trumpets, electric guitars, female vocals, etc. And a combination of coils and capacitors strip out the highs and the lows so a mid-range driver can play just the frequencies right there in the sweet spot between the woofers and the tweeters. But all of those frequencies are traveling along one set of speaker wires from the amp to the speaker. Wouldn't it be better if we had two sets of speaker wire going from the amp to the speaker? When a speaker moves in and out, it creates vibrations in the air that you hear as sound. It also sends electrical interference back down the speaker wire to the crossover and, if you have those jumpers installed, across the jumpers. This is especially a problem with the large woofer sending bass interference to the high frequency portion of the speaker. If the jumpers are removed and separate speaker wires feed those two inputs, that interference has a much longer path to travel, the entire length of the bi-wire speaker wires, and it will lose strength over that longer signal path. So its effects on the tweeter are lessened. Another slightly obvious difference is that more copper wire provides less impedance to the amplifier. So doubling up on the wires with bi-wiring should cut the impedance roughly in half, allowing the amp to put out a tiny little bit more power. More is better, right? The difference can indeed be measured with sophisticated equipment, but can you hear a difference? Many people will not hear an improvement, as the differences will be very subtle. But if you appreciate finer detail in your music, you may hear the positive effect. That's bi-wiring in a nutshell. So how do you do that? Well, first, you'll need a speaker that has two sets of speaker wire inputs, like this one. One input for the high frequencies and one input for the low frequencies. You'll notice it also has little jumpers connecting the two inputs together. When you are just using one set of speaker wires, all the music goes into both inputs. That feeds the crossover with full range music. To buy wire, you'll need to remove those jumpers. Then you'll need either special pre-made buy wire speaker wire or two precisely identical sets of speaker wires. It's generally better to use the pre-made stuff so you can be assured that the lengths of the two wires are indeed identical. These wires come from the factory with one set of speaker connections on the amplifier end of the wire and two sets of connectors on the speaker end of the wire. Positives to positives and negatives to negatives, red to red, black to black, it's really that simple. Okay, so what is bi-amping? Well, as the name implies, it's using two amplifiers or amplifier channels to power one speaker. And as we discussed earlier, more is better. 
right? So how does it work? I'll tell you. The most effective way to buy amp a speaker is to use two separate amplifiers, one for the highs, one for the lows. This is the most complex, expensive, and least common way to buy amp. This would involve a special amp with just the right amount of power for your tweeter and a more powerful amp for your woofer and an external crossover that goes between your preamp and your amps, so each amp only amplifies the proper frequencies. That then gets sent to your speaker. You might even want to remove your speaker's internal crossover to simplify the audio signal path. Like I said, this is not common. Bi amping doesn't need to be that complicated to have major sonic benefits, though. You could use two identical amplifiers that both send full range signal to each set of inputs on your speaker's separate inputs, with the jumpers removed. To get signal into your two amps, they get connected to one set of preamp outputs on your preamp. Many stereos and home theater receivers, even some integrated amps, have preouts for each channel. To connect those preamp outputs to two amps, you can either use Y adapters and two RCA interconnects, or use the pass-through connections found on some power amps to daisy-chain them together. Now each amp has the exact same full range signal to amplify and send along to your speakers. You'll simply need two identical sets of normal speaker wire, with one set of positive and negative connections on each end. The speaker's internal crossover will then separate the frequencies, just like with bi-wiring, except now with twice the power. More power, more sound, more dynamics, and more detail at any volume. You'll have the headroom you need to play the most dynamic recordings and crank it when you want to blast the music. The last way to buy amp your speakers is to use multiple channels from one multi-channel amp like a home theater receiver with at least seven assignable amp channels and the ability to use those channels to buy amp a set of speakers. This is actually a really common, easy way to get a little more performance from your buy ampable speakers. With the right home theater receiver and speakers, all you need to buy amp is two sets of identical speaker wires. Remove those jumpers, connect the wires, and set your receiver to buy amp your front speakers, and voila. Buy amping in this way from a home theater receiver is not likely to actually double your power the way using two separate amplifiers does. This is because the multiple amp channels in the one home theater receiver all share the same power supply. And when you use more channels, the available power gets split amongst those channels, diluting the power just a bit. But there's no denying that it still sounds better than simply using one channel per speaker. Remember, more is better. You get the benefits of bi-wiring and discrete amp channels. So your speaker should give you a little more detail and headroom compared to non-bi amp speakers. One other thing to watch out for, some speakers have an extra set of connections on the back. Those are for height speakers that are either built in or optional. Don't confuse those with bi-amp inputs. So there you go. Bi-wire and bi-amp speaker connections explained. Want help picking out your speakers, amplifiers, and speaker wires? That's what we do. Give us a call. Thanks for watching.